it would be too much to make it a tree with stars on it, right? With blinking lights, that would be way too much. But, uh, but yeah, I think that would be that that could be compelling. It certainly would give us a lot of space for Galadriel and Celeborn to explain, rather than explaining why their people are separated. That seems wrong to me, you know. Instead of explaining, oh well, these people aren't that cool as Barda, so they don't—they're not into it. It seems much more. It seems much easier and less, again, less hostile to say, you know, we don't really bring up Varda. It's not like we're not celebrating it for us, but, you know, these, they don't really think that much about that stuff. So rather than make a big deal over it and have everybody fighting over, we just have a nice little thing. And you see what I'm getting at? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm in the middle of kind of going back and forth with Alex in the chat. Um, he, he was asking me about the act breaks, and I said that the, that act, end, act one ends with the announcement of the invitation, act two ends with the arrival of Valinor, and he says, so act three has to be the ambassadors convinced to recommend Valinor, act four, yeah. and climax is something. I said the climax is the moment... The climax is them going back. Well, the, the climax is well. That's gonna the, the, the climax is is really gonna be the moment with Finway and Vire, the denouement, the denouement. Denouement. That word is the depiction of the elves back at the ranch at Coivin and, and the return of the ambassadors. The Act Three. Break. Oh yeah, I see. I see what you. Mean. Yeah, the the I think you're right. That the the climax is is that moment where she hands him the the, the tapestry. The Act 3 break, I think, is going to be the point where there's going to be Elway and Finway are going to have this conversation, and Elway and, and Finway is going to tell Elway about how he doesn't think like this is great. I'm I'm on board. I'm in. I really am. I don't think, but I, I'm not going to come back. I'm not coming back here without Muriel, and I don't yeah. think she's she's going to get me on board with this. You heard what she said. Hundreds of years ago, when we left, and well, I, I and then we get, it's... and then we get, and that's good. That's the end of our Act Three. At which point, uh, Ingway comes to Finway and says, "Elway told me that you were having some trouble. There's somebody I want you to meet." And he I takes think that's a little. Fire. I think I think he doesn't really decide. I think he can like that. <laughs> But I don't think he can really decide to come to Valinor without, without, uh, without, um, Mir what's her name? Muriel? No. Mir Mir is it Muriel? Am I retarded? His, um, who's his wife? Uh, Lee? Yes. Muriel. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't, that's wrong. I don't know why I thought that was wrong. Um, I think that that when he, when he gets the tapestry, he realizes, oh, we we can have a future here. So he's yes. he can he can be right. kind of, he can That's... be kind of torn in half, where he's not like I'm on board necessarily. He's he's expressing it in terms of like, man, this is really great. If only I can do this, right? Well, like, I'm only, not, if only I can not convince coming. Muriel to come. Yeah, I, that's that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm saying okay. that he's saying that he personally. He's he's in but personally. He's still, he's still expressing he, it in terms of his relationship, where he's like, I, right. I'd love to, but I can't do this. I can't come here without her. Yes. And um, Alex asks, uh, so are the are the pinch points flashes back to Muriel and Quivin? I think we that could be yeah, that could be it. Well, there's going to be the pinch point. The initial pinch point is they're going to have an argument before he leaves in the first place. Do she doesn't we... want him to die. Do and then there's wanna... going to be another one later on where he sees, right. he flashes back to, to their relationship at Koi Bin. Right. Do we want to expand Muriel's part at all and kind of actually come back to her periodically and get a sense of how much time has passed? Because I think Muriel would be our, a good opportunity to really see the really uh, emphasize the fact that like they've been gone a long, long time. I and do like that. Coming back. I do uh, like and it that. would give it would give us a lot of space to actually give a female some screen time alone. 
The only, I mean, it doesn't exactly pass the that. No, because she's that, thinking that about a man. <laughs> right, she's like pining for a man, and people are talking to her about a man. Uh, but at least we could shoehorn some other regular life at Kuivian <gasps> from her perspective. Well, I guess Vire talking to Finway about a woman doesn't actually count, does it? <laughs> um, no, because... We, we have passed the Blackfell test on other occasions. It has happened. This is And, all, and in the first season it. already. Yeah! <laughs> anyway. We're ahead of the curve for Tolkien. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Alright. Um... Yes, flashbacks to, to Muriel and Quiven, and maybe it might be a good idea to show... We can show that the, the darkness of their life in Quiven versus the light in Valinor. What I think would be kind of interesting... Well, this is the first time... Is to give her a moment of... This is... That we contrasted it. We have the trees already, right? The trees are yes. already there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the like we've already... We're contrasting the two. Yeah, like... Well, the, that's the... not true. We did that in, in season one of you. Yeah, but I think I think this will be a, a really good opportunity between those flashbacks. Like the whole, yeah. most of those shots should be well, they're gonna be right. Like the silver light is just as bright as the golden light. It's just a different hue. Yeah. So, um, I think I think by just the lighting that we choose to do in the Valinorian sets versus the the Quivianan sets, we'll do a, a spectacular job of visually differentiating. Yeah. Um, what? I think it would be kind of interesting to do is that in a flashback to Koi Venon, have um, have our our Avari representative, our Avari, our Naldoran Avari rep, telling telling the story to a bunch of elven children of the of the ambassadors of the mean? ambassadors and saying they were and they were never heard from again and having Muriel lose her mind, having Muriel just Flip out. Will you stop telling them they were never heard from again? <laughs> He's driving me nuts with that. I, I don't know. I think that would be back. Really I don't want to hear it. Yeah, like if she like grabbed him and like shoved him up against the wall and got in his face. Well, it's like they're coming back. They're coming back. I think that would be bad. Stay, Muriel. Whatever you, I think that whatever would be you need bad. to hear. Fantastic. Through the day. I'm still hoping that's something else. Alright. Okay. So, back to the frame. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you read my mind. So, back to the frame. Yeah, there's a lot of... It's just, that was a lot. Okay. Alright, so... That'll, maybe, that'll let, give maybe, us a lot of extra material for the yeah. episode. Maybe fill some minutes. Maybe this this um, the conflict over the uh, over the celebration thing. Maybe that's something we really want to do in episode three. To be honest, because the more I think about it, the division between the elves is something we want to illustrate more there rather than in episode two. We could have them gearing up for the thing and yeah. Uh, Kind of highlight what uh, maybe Godfell could kind of warn her. Like it may not be exactly what you're expecting. That's a that's a good idea. Like okay. she's talking about like, oh man, I can't wait to see this, and I'm looking forward yeah. to that. And she's kind of like, well, um, let's not get excited. Mm -hmm. And so, in order to explain the the Moriquendi, not the Moriquendi, but the Avari point of view. Yeah. Because some of the elves of Lothorian have got to be Avari. Some of them. Um, most of, I most could, of them are probably Sindar. And I think the majority yeah, are Sindar. I think I could see, but even the Sindar, like I could see the Sindar not necessarily being 100% on board. Like, I think, I don't necessarily know that we have any Avari at Lothlorien. Um, I feel like Lothlorien would not be the place that the Avari would want to go to. Yeah. Because yeah, no, Lothlorien is a more tendency. Point. Yeah, yeah, it's an old Doran tendency. Okay, so All right. maybe they've had dealings, but I don't feel like there's anybody that lives there. Okay. But I think we can still have that that difference where the Sindarin elves are more. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a Kelleborn thing. Is it a Kelleborn thing? 
I don't, I don't see Kelleborn taking that strong a position against the Valar. Maybe, uh, or against reverence to the Valar. Because remember, it's, he's lived in close proximity to right, Kelly right, right. for long periods of time, so it's yeah. not like he's not aware of the divinity aspect. But maybe maybe it's not that he he's the cause of... Like, he wasn't the one that got kind of grumpy about... Maybe he's the one that was, bridged the gap, is what you're well, kind of getting but when but when Galadriel talked to him about it, he was like, well, I mean, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like where he he kind of he didn't he's he's not withholding her wrath or anything, but she he, her tendency was to say, well, I mean, they're kind of losing the uh, the per the point, and he's right. like, that's okay. It's still a it's still a festival of a good thing, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like he's he's just kind of letting it go develop. It was an it, it was an organic development that that most people weren't that concerned with specifically worshipping Vire. And gotcha. his response was, yeah, that's okay. Just let them however they want to do it. Yeah. So Galadriel was all like, Jesus is the reason for the season, and Teleborn not, was not like... To be, not to be heavy-handed, right? Like, she's she, maybe she's conflicted about it, where she was like, I mean, I don't, I kind of don't like where this is headed, because yeah. it's really about this. And he's like, well, you know what, it's fine. Because I don't, I don't feel like she would be like I don't think I don't want to, I don't want the conflict to be like overblown between them over this issue. You know what I mean? Oh no no no! I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a major most, conflict. What what I'm suggesting is that there is there are a deeply embedded excuse me uh, deeply embedded conflicts of interest here. Yeah. Um. And it's, and yeah, it's they're a, not and really that they're not really getting into because they're aware because they're all together and they need to you know. But it is but it is kind of a, a, a point of contention you know in their relationship even where he's not that he caused it to be this way but he is perfectly comfortable with the way it is and she's right. not. Right. Right. And okay. it's, it's something that they're you know they kind of it's it's a dialogue that they have over like is this you know over thousands of years that we're not going to show. Exactly, because we have uh, this is water uh, under the bridge. No, no, yeah, exactly. But for for um, for Arwen, it's a new experience. Arwen, exactly, and so they're they're kind of walking Arwen through this this yeah. point of contention that they've had, you know, for centuries. Yeah. That's, well, and, and that's, my my impression is that she's been there for at least a bit. Noldor, yeah. Christmas, Sindar, do Hanukkah, and they tolerate the fact that the two festivals are at the same time. It's not quite like that. It, I think that that's exactly what I don't. Want to Right, I think that what he's getting at is that what they're celebrating is more like the the more secular version of Christmas that we see happening happening every year. I mean, like I know you live in, in the UK, and I'm not entirely sure how it works over there, um, because I've I've been there I've been there once, and I did notice that the UK is far more secular than than the US is, but. I've, so this may be something that has already been and gone and done over there, but over here, Christmas is still a very, very, very big deal. But it's kind of losing its religious connections as becoming more and more secular. And there is a camp that is freaking out over the fact that it's kind of losing its its roots. <clears throat> and it's apparently, peace on earth and goodwill toward men isn't enough. <laughs> well, it depends on how we're getting the peace on earth and good will toward men. You can have yeah. peace on you that can have peace brand. on earth and good will toward men at gunpoint. It doesn't make it a good they are thing. A brand of peace on earth and good will toward men. Yeah. Anyway, so so basically, it, um, Arwen is objecting to the secularization of this festival. And Galadriel is kind of, even though it's not her side of the argument, she's expressing <coughs> that the Sindar are not, they're not into this as, as much in that way. And that's okay because it's, right. it, it, you know, it, it hasn't been part of their experience. 
Um, that's a that's very subtle and interesting intellectual, but it is very subtle and dull, certainly to right. my European background, basis for a sort of conflict. I, I agree. That's why we're not giving it a lot of... I'm, I'm not... I'm not suggesting we give this a lot of time and effort yeah, in yeah. frame because I feel like it, it, it should be something story. that Arwen is confused about. It's a culture shock moment for her, and it, it kind of gives us a place to introduce the the conflict between the that we're gonna see, um, which is why I think you're right that it kind of the the main sort of resolution of of her culture shock doesn't come until episode three, yeah. but this is, it's an idea that we can introduce that. Cause yeah. I mean, we're going to come back at the, I think we're coming back at the end of this episode. Um, may, maybe not. I was going to say, we're going to come and have like some of that initial, you know, back and forth over you guys, this place is rad and we need to go. And mm -hmm. a bunch of people are like, Oh no, we're not going to do that. Um, well, I don't know. No, no. The, the actually, what the host had said was that instead of even going back into the frame at the end of the episode, mm -hmm. is actually having the, the episode end with the arrival of the ambassadors. Oops. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, I, that would be fine. I, yeah, I think that works. And um, then we can kind of get into. We can get into the meat of what's going on in the frame a little bit more in episode three to kind of e explain the differences between the Avari and the and the um, and the Kyle Quinney perspectives on the situation. Uh, yeah, that, that, I think that's right. The hugging, kissing, and hey, you're not dead, saving as much for the debate for episode three, because God knows that's going to need material. Yeah, because what we really need is more standing around talking. That's what this show yep. absolutely must have more of, yep. is yep. people standing yep. around and talking about yep. <laughs> that. Is, that is going to have to be, like, the longest. It's it's not going to be all debate. What it's going to have to be is there's going to have to be other moments, like interpersonal yeah. debate that takes place yes. off of the main thing. I don't, I don't like, understand why main. people, like House of Cards is only people talking to each other. That's yeah. that whole yes. show. And and people are like, oh, but we don't just want to have people talking. That is that is some of the best television that has ever existed. I, you guys are crazy. Oh, my, my wife has been watching Criminal Minds yeah, religiously for weeks. And and it's, they, well, no. There's usually about they, they cut from the investigators talking about what the bad guy's doing, and mm. the bad guy doing the bad things. More talking that about hurt. it. They have an epiphany, and then they go and rescue the latest victim at the very last moment. Happens that that's the way every episode right. goes. The last five minutes of the episode are like. It's like action-packed craziness. Is the last yeah. five minutes? Yes. But everything else is pretty much people talking to each other. Which is, I don't know, yeah, so whatever. Yeah. Which is why so, it's, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that uh, at the birth of the talking, people were like, I hey, will never catch I'm on. I'm not really on board with the formulaic show. It would make it easier, but I'm really not on board with the formulaic show. I, 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 I typically despise the idea of formulaic TV. 